Tacoma Narrows Bridge, dedicated in 1940, became known as Galloping Gertie as it swayed in the winds sweeping up Puget Sound. Four months after it was opened, those winds sent the bridge into a rhythmic dance of death. In an attempt to build the ultimate slender suspension bridge, its designer failed to account for a constant 40 mile an hour wind. Pressure from the wind triggered huge oscillations, as well as an incredible torsional or twisting motion. People who used the bridge were literally getting seasick. They compared it to riding a wave. Here it goes! Four months after it opened, the wave crashed. This Coman Arrows Bridge is a very classic example of having a very bad shape with regard to wind. A very blunt surfaces, the wind attacks, and it has almost like fluid water moving around up here, creates eddies, oscillating actions then start, and in this case, threw the bridge into a resonance, which eventually collapsed it, all under very small wind forces. The danger of resonance is well known by structural engineers. Resonance is when a structure vibrates in tune to its natural harmonic. Every structure has what is called a period of vibration in the same way that a violin string vibrates in tune to its given length. If a skyscraper is subjected to a force, typically wind, that is in tune with its own distinctive period of vibration, the vibration exponentially increases and the building could actually shake itself apart. The force does not have to be strong but only constant. In the case of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, a 40 mile an hour wind set up a violent resonance. This is also what happened at the Hyatt Regency in Kansas City when hundreds of dancers created a resonance which collapsed the hotel's walkways. Resonance also occurred in a recent bridge in Russia, as seen here. One of the, the plates of the structural engineer is that very few people know what we do. The mass press tends to always give credit to the architect for the whole project and the, the, pre the public therefore tends to think that the architect does all those things whereas you know there are mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, plumbing engineers and structural engineers, elevator engineers, exterior wall engineers. But the structural engineer is probably the person with the most responsibility because if we make a mistake the potential loss of life is unbelievably large. Every skyscraper moves in the wind. People only notice when the movements are large or jerky. The taller and thinner the skyscraper, the worse the acceleration. There are buildings in the United States where chandeliers will swing, water in the toilet bowl will slosh around, and we've done plenty of studies and we find out that at certain accelerations, people start to feel nauseous. And the biggest problem we had on Petronas is that on that kind of a height to width ratio building, to keep the accelerations within the limits that people will not get seasick, literally, is really the major challenge. The building moves. It's quite amazing. I think it has a two-foot displacement. And every once in a while, especially when I'm wearing very tall high heels and I'm walking by a window that's open, I can feel the building move back and forth. And it, it's given me vertigo a couple of times. Skyscrapers of the past used heavy steel girders and stiff masonry walls to reach their staggering heights. The masonry dampened the movement of the skyscrapers in the wind. Glass boxes eliminated the masonry shell and used lighter, high-strength steel and concrete. That made them cheaper, but the taller they grew, the more they swayed. It took engineers decades to work out how to build lightweight towers that were both tall and stable. Completed in 1977, Manhattan's 59-story City Corp Center was among the first glass towers to reach skyscraping heights.
But in high winds, the building swayed dramatically. The problem was solved by installing a 400-ton counterweight in the tower sloping top. This is the story of an urban nightmare, about the world we take for granted, proving much more dangerous than we know. It's also the story of a 17-year-old secret about a skyscraper in serious trouble. It means in my lifetime, this building could fall over. Certainly, I was sufficiently convinced in my numbers that it sooner or later was bound to. The engineer at the table stood up his notebook <coughs> and dropped it and said it's 70 miles an hour for five minutes. There goes the Citicorp building. The eccentric design, apparently, was the root of uh, what became uh, the greatest disaster never told. The light from the eastern sky catches one building in particular on the Manhattan skyline. The familiar midtown landmark of the Citicorp Tower. It is only now that the building's engineer has broken his silence and the story of the tower can be told. Hello, I'm Bill Curtis. It's a story whose ending might have been the most cataclysmic event in American history. A 59-story building with 2,000 employees inside would topple. And like a row of dominoes, hundreds of other buildings would fall in its wake. Thousands would be crushed to death. But what is probably the most incredible part of this story is that at the time, very few people knew the possibility of such a monstrous disaster existed. In this edition of Investigative Reports, we see how the danger was discovered, how it was kept so secret, and how a hurricane might have wiped out mid-Manhattan. In Fatal Flaw, a skyscraper's nightmare, we also meet a highly acclaimed engineer who had to face a decision between his career or possibly turning parts of New York City into a massive graveyard. In 1977, Citicorp Bank built the seventh highest skyscraper in the world, a striking design built on super tall columns so that it seemed to float on the skyline. It was a symbol of corporate confidence in a city that had been on the verge of bankruptcy. The safety of this structure, like that of any other tall building in Manhattan, was something taken for granted by the thousands of people who crowded into the area every day. What they didn't know was that the new tower had a major design flaw. In this story of how the unthinkable became possible, it is shocking how few people knew the seriousness of the problem at the time. All these magazines writing these stories about what a masterpiece it was, what a tremendous... They had no idea. Most journalists have no idea. Most people walking on the street have no idea that this building could have killed tens of thousands of people. In the worst case scenario, this was not a building that was going to just simply crumble and fall down. This was a building that was going to tip over in the wind. And it would cause domino. It would cause the next high rise and the next high rise to, to fail. And how far that would go? Probably the most extreme that I heard was that it could go as far as Central Park. 